Thank you for being here. May God bless this time to encourage us to live lives full of thanksgiving. Amen. The bread of life. I have the privilege of preaching the gospel message. A little bit later in the service, our own Pastor Garvey will share a reflection of the gospel on the battlefields. Together, we give thanks for this amazing gift known as freedom to proclaim the gospel. Bread of life. What is your favorite bread? I have two favorites. Fine, yeah. <laughs> rye bread, Swedish rye bread is my favorite. It's because it was made with love by my grandma, Mabel. And it was awfully good. It was a tremendous gift, but it was made with love. That's what makes bread so good. I wanted to share on the other side of my family that I think I was one of the few cousins that enjoyed this thing called lutefisk. <laughs> and I remember not being popular. For you who've never had it, just think of uh, fish jello warmed. <laughs> we can talk later, either for pastoral care or uh, to order some. We think of Thanksgiving, you think of the memories, don't you, of your family, of gathering, and what a privilege it is to have memories of our family. And I believe that the Deuteronomy text, Deutero meaning the second, that text is encouraging us to share the memories of our love of family, our love of God. And families need to be taught. You remember teaching your children, your grandchildren. They need to be taught how to say please and thank you. It doesn't come naturally. And this memory of understanding that the phrase that was used here as bringing first fruits, not the leftovers, but the first fruits to the Lord, giving thanks for all that was given. And the humbleness in which we do this. A wandering Aramean is the phrase that was used for Abraham or for Jacob. Scholars discuss either one, but this for sure, that they were not in secure property. They were being led by the Spirit and it was God's mighty hand and outstretched arm that allowed them a place in which to live. It was God's promises that allowed to live. And for anybody here who had gone through the depression, those stories shaped us who are younger. My dad said it this way, don't you dare take my frugality away from me. Now that's a depression phrase, isn't it, right? For people who went through that, to be able to uh, still love life and love one another, but to know that nothing was to be taken for granted in a world now where perhaps we do. We, we share that, and we also need to share God's character, knowing that the Lord is God. For the Lord is good, as the psalm says. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. And so I encourage you, this bread of life, this, this love that comes from the Father through the Son, is an opportunity at your Thanksgiving table tomorrow is to share in a way that may be new to you or familiar. But as you gather, it's not just about football, is it? It's about that precious family time, especially intergenerational. I encourage you to do this practical and simple task to around the table and include the kids' table if you have that, to, to share the highs and lows of this past year. What went well in your life and what was a struggle in your life? And then allows an opportunity for kids to see that life of faith is not a simple uh, glib statement, but is God is with us in the highs and the lows. Second phase to this is it provides an opportunity to pray for the person next to you, to pray for them in their highs and their lows, and then to bless them, how they are a blessing to your life. To share and to pray and to bless creates a thanksgiving dynamic that is powerful, especially for those grieving the loss of loved ones. To be able to do this recalls God's character and will create memories for many, many years. The bread of life or the love of Christ shown to us is shown in the present and the Philippians text is tremendous advice in this time of as we call it, generalized anxiety, all of us nervous about so many different things. 
this beautiful phrase, do not worry about anything but in, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Let your requests be known to God. Let me just go over the math again. Do not worry about anything. What does that leave you to worry about? With the term nothing, right? But in everything by prayer and supplication. Prayer, that meditative time to take time to pray and to listen to God, not just issue uh, your demands or requests. Supplication is your requests, but to take the prayerful time. I suggest to you that this can be inverted into an invitation to pray. Anytime you worry is an invitation to pray. Anytime you hear someone else worrying is an immediate opportunity to pray. Does that make sense? So that to flip it, that the worries, uh, Luther said it this way, pray and let God worry. Okay, so that it's, it's shaping that. And what I speak of this bread of life is lived in the present, there is so much going on, isn't there? And this term rejoice is a bringing forth again the joy of being thankful to God and thankful to others. I encourage you that every time you have a worry, because they will come, but take it as an opportunity for prayer and to rejoice again and again, joy in the Lord. And then the gospel lesson itself, the bread of life, the love of God and Jesus Christ helps us face our future. Coming off a very successful ministry intervention where bread was shared Jesus teases the people that were following him that they just filled themselves with bread, but they need to fill themselves with the love of God. This beautiful phrase, what must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. Even our faith, a precious gift from God, God's work in our hands, an awesome and tremendous thanksgiving for the work of God to discover and to promote faith in us, a gift of the Holy Spirit. And the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world, this incredible love. I am the bread of life, says Jesus. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Do you see the future tense there? that we can live confidently into the future. And so this bread of life for our past, for our present, for our future, allows a thankful response in which to live life. I pray for our congregation assembled here today, for you from the community, from our own congregational members, for guests from far and near, is that meaningful memories Create the basis for thanksgiving. Take advantage to create those and to recall those to those in the next generation for God's faithfulness is to all generations. And faith, rejoicing in the present, do not let it get you down, the despair that is often in the world, but see it as an opportunity in which to not worry but to pray and to be steadfast in your prayer and supplication to do this with your younger uh, members of your family will be a powerful Thanksgiving memory. And then for the future itself, the work of God cannot be stopped. There is no trend that God cannot overcome with the bread of life, the love of Jesus Christ. We are people who are confident in the future because of what Christ has done for us. And we begin now the Advent season with the first of the Advent messages, hope. And as we keep hope alive, it's because of God's love for you and I. Isn't it amazing that to be thankful, to have a base of remembering, a expression of current faith and hope for the future, now that's true thanksgiving. I ask this blessing for you and for me and for this community in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue our worship through our prayerful offerings. Thank you for being generous. <laughs> 